morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. And the Pharisees and Sadducees came to test him. They asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, so aware of this, said, O you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that I do not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Peter. Simon Barjona, for the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with the angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. We're going to focus today just on the first four verses of this chapter, where the religious guys, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, go to Jesus to test him. They're ultimately looking to try to discredit him and to uh, knock a few pegs, uh, if you will, off of Jesus. You see, religious people, uh, those that think they hold the keys to righteousness and therefore um, right living, can't handle grace. And really, it's because they're missing love. When you don't have love, you're focused on the rules and getting everyone on board or back on board. And well, we're in a time where love and grace are desperately needed. Jesus replied to their question that you can figure out the weather by looking at the skies, but you're unable to interpret the signs of the times. A wicked, adulterous generation seek a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah, which was what? Well, three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, and then back to life? Hmm. He's obviously talking about you know, his death and resurrection. The times are clearly telling us, be ready. The world continues to slide in a direction further and further from God. So be aware of the signs. Be aware that the end is drawing near, that Jesus is coming back. Let's be committed to simply following Jesus, loving those around us, and extending to others the very grace that he has extended to us. Until next time, I'm little by little.